always play by the rules. You'd think that when two massive oceans crash into one another, their waters would blend into one endless blue. But in some corners of our planet, that's not what happens. Instead, something strange, almost impossible, unfolds. Two worlds collide, side by side, yet they refuse to mix. Scientists call it baffling, locals call it a miracle. And today, I want to take you there. Before we go further into the story like the video, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon. Picture this. You're standing at the very southern tip of Africa. The wind is howling, salty and sharp, carrying with it the roar of two seas in battle. This is Cape Agulhas, the dividing line between the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean. The land here is raw and ancient, with jagged rocks jutting into the waves like broken teeth. And just beyond the coastline, you can actually see it, the invisible border that separates two mighty oceans. On one side, the Atlantic, cold and steel gray, its waters born in the icy womb of the South Pole. On the other, the Indian Ocean, warmer, richer, painted in shades of turquoise and deep green. The two crash together endlessly, but instead of merging into one, they push back. They resist. They stay apart. A local fisherman named Sifo once told me a story here. He said his grandfather used to bring him out to these rocks as a boy, pointing to the restless sea and whispering, that is where giants fight. One giant breathes ice, the other breathes fire. And no matter how long they battle, neither wins. Sifo laughed when he told me, but his eyes still flickered with something reverent, something that only comes from living close to forces you can never control. And here's the thing, this isn't just some illusion. If you were in a boat right now, looking down from the deck, you'd see it with your own eyes, a line in the water. Not sharp like a wall, but a gradient, a division where two colors meet yet resist blending. On one side, the water is darker, heavier, colder. On the other, it's lighter, warmer, and sometimes even carries different sediments that give it a unique hue. It's as if the oceans are neighbors who share a fence but refuse to step onto each other's lawns. Now, why does this happen? It all comes down to science, density, salinity, and temperature. The Atlantic's water is saltier and cooler, while the Indian is fresher and warmer. When they collide at Cape Agulhas, their unique properties create what's called an oceanic front. Imagine oil and water colliding in a pan, they swirl, they touch, but they never truly become one. For the sailors of centuries past, this wasn't science. It was sorcery. The Portuguese explorers who rounded the Cape during the Age of Discovery wrote about these waters with awe and fear, describing seas that clashed but would not merge, waves that pulled ships apart, and tempests that seemed to rise from the ocean's anger itself. Standing there, you can almost feel the ghosts of those ships. The Cape of Storms, as it was once called, swallowed vessels whole. Masts snapped, hulls splintered, men were lost to the abyss. Even today, Cape Agulhas is notorious, a graveyard of more than 150 shipwrecks that litter the seabed. And yet, amid this violence, the invisible line between oceans remains, a riddle of nature, unbroken. But our story doesn't end here. Because thousands of miles away, in a land of glaciers and mountains, another battle of waters rages on. Let's travel north, to Alaska. Picture the Gulf of Alaska, towering cliffs, snow-capped peaks, and an endless sweep of sea that seems to stretch into eternity. The air here is crisp and sharp, filled with the cries of seabirds and the crash of glaciers calving into the water. And here too, you'll witness something extraordinary. Two waters collide, the gulf's nutrient-rich waters and the fresher, silty meltwater from countless glaciers that spill into the sea. And once again, they refuse to blend. From a plane or a drone above, it looks unreal. A line in the ocean, one side deep blue, the other cloudy and lighter, like cream poured into coffee but never stirred. Sailors and fishermen here tell their own stories too. Some call it the place where the sea carries two moods, one calm and blue, the other angry and gray. Indigenous legends speak of spirits that inhabit these waters, each guarding their realm, never surrendering. Science explains it this way, glacial meltwater carries fine particles of rock, known as silt, ground down by the slow crushing of ice over centuries. This silt makes the water cloudy and changes its density. When it meets the clearer, saltier ocean water, the two resist mixing. They swirl alongside each other, clashing like rivals. If you scoop some into your hands, you can almost feel the difference, the glacial water soft and silky, the ocean water sharp and briny. Together in one palm, yet never truly one. And here's the beautiful part. This refusal to mix creates life. 
the nutrient-rich boundary becomes a feeding ground for fish, birds, and whales. It's a banquet laid out by nature, precisely because two oceans won't blend. Out of division comes abundance. Out of contrast, balance. I remember talking to a marine biologist in Alaska, Dr. Harper, who told me, people see that line in the ocean and think it's a wall, a border. But in reality, it's a meeting place. It's where the magic happens. It's where ecosystems thrive. Her words stuck with me, because isn't that true of life too? Sometimes, the places where differences collide are where the most incredible things emerge. Now imagine this, you're standing on a cliff in Alaska, the wind whipping through your hair, watching a pod of orcas glide effortlessly along the boundary between these waters. Behind them, a glacier looms, shimmering blue in the sunlight. Ahead, the endless Pacific rolls on. You watch the two oceans touch but never merge, and you realize you're looking at something eternal, an ancient dance that's been happening long before humans ever set eyes on it. Back at Cape Agulas, locals say the spirits of the Atlantic and Indian Oceans are locked in an eternal embrace, too proud to yield, too strong to let go. In Alaska, some fishermen believe the sea spirits of glacier and ocean argue over who will rule the coast, their quarrel etched into the water itself. Whether myth or science, one truth remains. These places remind us how vast, how untamed, and how mysterious our planet still is. And maybe that's the real story here. Not just that two oceans refuse to mix, but that we can still stand in awe of it. In a world where we think we've mapped everything, explained everything, tamed everything, nature still surprises us. She still holds secrets we can't fully grasp. She still draws invisible lines in the water and dares us to wonder why. So the next time you look at a map, trace your finger to the southern tip of Africa, or the icy edges of Alaska. Remember that in those places, two oceans meet but never mix. Remember the line in the water. And remember that sometimes, the most extraordinary wonders aren't hidden. They're right there in front of us, if only we pause to see them. Because here's the thing. Boundaries don't always mean separation. Sometimes, they mean connection. At Cape Agulas and in the Gulf of Alaska, the refusal of oceans to merge creates storms, shipwrecks, legends, ecosystems, and life itself. It's not just a scientific quirk, it's the poetry of the planet. And maybe, just maybe, it's also a reminder for us. That even in our differences, even in the places where we clash and resist, something beautiful can still be born. This waterline shouldn't exist. But it does. And in that impossibility lies one of Earth's greatest truths. That the world is still full of wonder, waiting for us to look, to listen, and to believe. So, what do you think? Is it science, is it spirit, or is it something beyond both? The oceans will keep their secret. All we can do is stand at the edge, watch the waters touch but never blend, and feel small, amazed, and utterly alive.